Hey everybody, welcome to our midweek update. We have a special one for you today. I've asked a guest to join me today, which I usually don't have a guest on my uh, midweek updates on Wednesdays, but I have a special guest for you. So Brandon Holthouse is joining us right now. And uh, listen, we have a really good program for you today. Uh, he has a conference going on at his church. It's come, Actually, it's the Lord's Church. He's the pastor of it. Um, yeah. And uh, that's going on this uh, Saturday and Sunday. I'm looking very forward to that. And uh, but, so we're going to get into that in a few minutes and, and uh, talk about some of the things that we're going to be discussing there. But uh, first off, I, we're watching things that are going on in Australia. Uh, so there's a new law that's about to kill free speech in democracy in Australia. And phones were shut off, went down last week in Australia, 40% of the people in Australia. I know we have a lot of uh, people that watch us both over in Australia. We're going to be there coming up in February in New Zealand. Brandon, did you hear about the phones going down in Australia? Uh, um, I've heard about things like that, and it, it's just more of this dystopian nightmare, I think, that we're all seeing a, a, around the world. And again, what is it all about? What is it's about control? And I think, unfortunately, um, they're getting away with it. Um, they're being they're able to take more and more control from people. And again, one of the the the, the downsides of technology is the fact that yeah, it makes our lives convenient, but it, it, it can fall into the wrong hands, and they can control us all through this technology because we're all networked together and so it's very concerning but again it's pointing us again forward to what we should expect to see in the end times and this is showing us how the antichrist is going to be able to control everything totally it, it appears like it's a big test you know australia yeah. and canada they seem to be the 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 epicenters of testing out things and i i agree that that's exactly what the, is really going on and they can control everything. And, and we've already known this. You've been talking about it, Billy, myself, uh, yeah. many of our colleagues have. From the very beginning, if we go back four years, we were talking about this, but it's finally hitting mainstream media. Gee, what a shock it is, right? Klaus yeah, Schwab, right. yeah, Klaus Schwab and the World Economic Forum's secret blueprint to control every aspect of your life. Gee, I am so surprised. And then another <laughs> article hit regarding Zuckerberg, Gates, and the rest of them. And you're looking going, yeah. I mean, you, you, it took you four years to figure this out? Or well, actually, <laughs> we've been saying this is coming as long as we've been doing Bible prophecy. But I mean, it's all, it, it is laughable. I mean, when you think about it, you look at this, come on, it took you this long? Yeah, you know, that, it's kind of shocking in the, in the prophetic world, like we're four years ahead of, of mainstream media where they finally catch up. And you're right, you and I and Billy and everyone else has been uh, hammering Klaus Schwab ever since we saw him poke his head up. And so now they're finally getting the drift of him. Okay, so here's what will happen. This is always the tactic. Once these guys start getting found out on mainstream They'll switch and, and 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 switch their messaging, switch the language, switch the the, the terminology, and what will happen is they'll reinvent themselves. And no, that's not what we meant. We meant this, and that's typically the tactic they take. So I expect Klaus Schwab to change his um, his tune a little bit. But again, I can tell you this: the agenda will not change. It's agenda uh, uh, twenty thirty is when they want to uh, implement it. So they might change it to a different name. Um, but again, what is the agenda? The agenda is not going away. It's for world domination. It's to be able to control people. And so they they'll, they'll change the name, guaranteed. And if they have to, they'll get another front man, and it won't be Klaus Schwab. It'll be someone else. But at the end of the day they have a push for the agenda and that's what people have to realize it's that's not going away and we know this from the bible it's not going to go away because this is exactly what's predicted uh to happen so whether it's klaus schwab or someone else um uh, once they're found out they have to go they switch tactics basically yeah and uh, i was watching a video not too long ago in fact we might have talked about this a couple of weeks back, but it was this uh, lady, she says, hey, the good news for the elites is that we all seem to get along and we're all going the same direction. The bad news is nobody nobody else trusts us. <laughs> they only trust themselves. And you know, the fact right. is that people are waking up on all sides of the political aisle, 
But the good news is the Bible gives us the answers for the hope. And we knew this, we knew this all along because we could see the, we know what the Bible teaches. Uh, Brand, let, let me shift gears here sure. for just a minute about Israel. And uh, we see things going on there. I believe eventually this, there's going to be a false peace that's going to come out of the current war. Uh, sure. Maybe it won't be the first, uh, all of them are going to be false peace. Uh, all of the ceasefires in the past, they've all been false peace. Ultimately, it's going to lead to uh, the covenant the Antichrist is going to confirm, but we keep warning people and telling them the truth. And there are so many lies about Israel that are out there right now. They are everywhere. And yeah. uh, listen, you have a conference this weekend, Saturday and Sunday, November 18 and 19. And uh, listen, your conference is actually titled The Truth About Israel. People need to know the truth. I mean, you and I talk about it, and the comments are off the charts about how evil we are. Uh, don't you know those aren't real Jews? And all these, uh, they have no right to the land. And it's, it's not just people who come from a Muslim background that are saying this. It's coming from every background. But listen, uh, we're going to talk about the truth regarding Israel. I'm excited about this conference and all the speakers that are going to be there. Yeah, I, and we have a, a great cast of speakers, including yourself, and 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 we want to cut through all the propaganda and the lies. And um, we're going to have all the speakers talk about the different subjects about Israel, what the Bible says, what's going on on the ground there, um, and wh what what the future holds for Israel according to the scriptures. And you're right, Tom. Um, we are being bombarded by people who I don't, I don't know what to call it, replacement theology, I think, maybe supersessionism, but there's a, like a deep-seated hatred for Israel in Christianity that I'm shocked about, that we're getting a pushback from people online that, you know, like you say, uh, these are not the real Jews, uh, this and that, they don't have a right to the land, uh, the church is taking over their promises, it's like, where are you guys coming from? And so unfortunately, I think it's part of the great apostasy. Um, and I think the dividing line of Israel is a major uh, uh, issue that's dividing the church. And, it, and rightfully so, the truth will divide. And we're having people call our church and tell us to take down our Israel flags. And, and people have their signs. We, we had um, yard signs for our people to put in their yard. It says, we support Israel. And yet people vandalize them and take their signs and put them in trash cans. And you're like, what, what kind of world am I in now? Is this 1938? What is going on here with people? You would rather support Hamas? Do you not know anything? And so that's what this conference is about, is number one, dispelling the myths about the Middle East and, and the Palestinian people and 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 where did they come from and, and, and how they're related, obviously, to uh, the threat that Israel's dealing with. But I'm shocked, Tom. And then you have all these these week after week marches in all these major cities of pro Hamas to the river to the sea, uh, in, shouting in fatata. W where are these people coming from? What happened? And it seems like the whole world seems to be brainwashed. Man, it's crazy. Yeah. Well, it's been an amazing brainwashing world that we've lived in over the last several years. <laughs> And uh, it is now infecting pretty much this even infects the church. And we need to be solid and know what the Bible says. And I appreciate this conference so much. Uh, so it's obviously you're speaking at it. Uh, yeah. You've invited myself and also uh, Bill Koenig's going to be speaking there, Billy yeah. Crone. And then your two, uh, our two Jewish uh, messianic friends, Olivier Melnick yeah. and David Tal are going to be there. Yeah. Going to be great. But Brandon, yeah. you know, people wonder, they go, okay, so what good is going to come out of this? Well, not only do we have, we're going to be well-educated, really well-informed. It is going to be a fantastic yeah. conference, everybody. But also, this is so cool. You, you've got your hands on things. You're actually doing great things for Israel, even with all of the proceeds for the conference, whether a person is in person or online live streaming it's, you yeah. know, uh, people say, oh, you're just trying to get rich or whatever. That's nonsense. <laughs> I mean, right. I don't know anybody who gets rich off of these things anyway, personally. But <laughs> the proceeds are all, this is so cool, the proceeds are all going to help out the, 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 the people. You want to tell everybody a little bit about these things? Sure. Yeah. So we're giving our proceeds to Israel in two ways. One, one is directly to the IDF. 
we have sources on the on, on the ground right now of uh, different troops and and um, providing them supplies. Uh, and then the other stream is going to displace Jewish people from their homes that uh, you know they're surrounding the gaza area they can't live there anymore so they're displaced right now and making sure they get food water shelter clothing every every essential they can while they're not being able to live in their homes and and specifically um like for the idf they need uh bulletproof vests they need helmets they need scopes for their rifles and, and different aspects of that and we're actually providing that um, believe it or not, we're actually sending um, a group um, with luggage, luggage that's just full of these supplies for that one troop that need night scopes and all kinds of different things and, uh, and providing that. And then uh, we have also scheduled a trip uh, in December to help the IDF and to help these displaced Jewish people. And so we're sending a, a team over there and that's going to supply and and then also going to do service projects to help with um you know uh, believe it or not uh picking vegetables picking fruit to get that to people on the ground and uh all kinds of different service projects so we're actually doing something about it we're actually going on the ground and going to do something so all this proceeds is going to go directly to them and helping them get uh, get through this difficult time, this war, obviously, and because we know it doesn't end, we know uh, you know the threat of Hezbollah. We know other things are happening, and what people don't realize is what the IDF is telling us is the, uh, the, these three hundred thousand reservists that they called in. They're not well supplied. the The, the IDF is very very well supplied around Gaza, but these other reservists, they just don't have the um, Israel didn't have all the uh, the gear for all of them, and and so a lot of these guys are lacking things and just simple things like socks and and now it's cold up there in the north and they need blankets and stuff like that. So that's what we're providing and and hopefully we can play our part in in blessing Israel just like the the Abrahamic covenant says, "I will bless those who bless you and I will curse those who curse you." So we want to be a part of that. So yeah. It might be a, people say, well, I can't believe you're charging $30 for live stream or $125, you know, to in person. It's like, well, yeah, but it's a fundraiser. Uh, it's going to a good cause. So that's what people should know uh, and how we're helping. Yeah, I think it's great. Also think of this in light of Matthew chapter 25. And a lot of people mm -hmm. are saying, what can I do? And, and we're providing more, even for the conference coming up in Australia that we're going to be at. Same thing, the proceeds are all going to go to support these these causes, and, and yeah. we, we tend to forget the economy in Israel is shattered. Uh, you don't yes. have people working the farm, so you guys get to go there and pick. That's that's so cool. Yeah. And I think of Matthew twenty five, uh, where Jesus is talking. It's the Olivet Discourse, and he says um, he talks about, "Hey, blessed are you for <laughs> when I was hungry, you fed me; I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink; when I was in prison, you visited me." Uh, and they say, well, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or, or so forth? And he says, whatever you've done to the least of my brethren, you've done unto me. And he's yeah. talking about the Jews, my brethren, in the tribulation period. So we're not in the tribulation period yet, but this is an opportunity as we see the Jewish persecution. Folks, we got to admit, we're watching anti-Semitism, Jewish persecution explode around the world especially the Western world. As you mentioned, Brandon, already it's like, what are we, 1938 Germany again? Yeah, I yeah. think it's actually worse than that because this time it's global. And, yeah. and even with a peace covenant that will eventually come, people's, uh, people might stop with the outward expression of anti-Semitism, but you know what? What's been exposed is what's in their heart. Out of the abundance of their heart, the mouth speaks. It will rise up again, even yes. if a lid is put on it by some kind of fake peace covenant. But now we know what people think. Every, every Jew alive, if they're willing to admit it, uh, it knows what people think about them. And, it's, and yeah. the, the events in Israel is just being used, used as an excuse. Uh, yeah. and, and, as a, and the Jews are being set up as a target, but we can see it. And, um, oh, man. Yeah, and the latest reports I hear too, uh, Tom, is um, I, I read an article that more and more Jewish people are leaving America 
to go back to Israel because they feel it's safer there, yeah. which is again, more prophetic uh, uh, significance because of the prophecies saying that I'm gonna bring Israel back into the land. Well, we, we're, we've been watching that since 1948 and even you know 1800s. But now I always said, how is God gonna get the Jews out, you know, back to the land out of America? Well, now I know it's the same how, how he got them out of Europe is through anti-Semitism and now anti-Semitism in America to where Jews are like saying, I feel safer in Israel than I do in America. And I, I, I don't blame them. Yeah. And then the, on top of that, here's the interesting thing, too, that people need to understand. This, this concept of blessing Israel is provoking many Jewish people to jealousy. And let me explain this. We're talking to the guys on, in the IDF right on the ground. And, and, and the one guy I'm talking to, he's a Messianic believer in the IDF. And he says, Brandon, when, when, they, when these guys see the worldwide anti-Semitism, they're, they're fully aware that this is happening. But then it's these, these Christian evangelicals out of nowhere coming in and supporting and doing what we can. It blows them away. And then what's happened, he said, is they're opening themselves up to saying, why do they want to do this? And then he's able to tell them about the Lord, about the Lord Jesus. And he says a lot of them are getting these young IDF guys are getting saved through all of this. And it's because they see the anti-Semitism, but there's a group that that loves them and supports them. And there, there, there is what Paul was talking about, uh, provoking them to jealousy. And it's working. Uh, that, that spiritually it's opening them up to the Lord. So it's pretty amazing to watch this unfold right in front of our eyes. That is so cool, the way that you just described it. So we have the evangelical, those who actually believe the Bible is true, Old Testament and New Testament, all the prophecies, uh, partnering with the Messianic Jews in Israel, two groups, by the way, that... Yeah. You know, the Orthodox never want to hear from us or from the Messianic Jews. There's definitely a separation. The Messianic yeah. Jews don't typically have an opportunity where the hearts are open of other Jews in Israel to listen to. But guess what? This has caused their hearts to be open. And we have Messianic Jews and evangelical believers in Christ able to take the gospel to Jesus, which also shows me that the time is short and the Lord yeah. is saving as many Jews as possible right now. Uh, and, and it yeah. is remarkable to watch because when people, they know you got the threats of Hamas, you're going into a tunnel, you're, you're the threats of real death, you know the world is hating you, and all of a sudden you have somebody next to you and, and they're crying, they're, they're fearful. Do you, what, do you guys have any hope? How do you have your hope? My hope is in Yeshua. And, yes. and God has sent all these people, this is so cool, God has sent all these Messianic believers who would have been separate before, he sent them into the lives yeah. of all these Jews. And, and folks, we need to remember that. That is a praise report. And being able to just assist, come alongside like this, as Brandon has mentioned in these couple yeah. of things he has set up with uh, the proceeds from the conference this weekend and what you're doing with boots on the ground, with the trip that yeah. you have set up is is so, uh, man, that's so cool. Uh, and yeah. uh, I know you got a busy week. You probably want to share more, but I'll let you save it for Saturday. But uh, real quick, people want to join us for the conference. How can they do that? Yeah, just go to our website, rockharborchurch.net, and then you'll go. It's on the front page of the website and, and the Truth About Israel conference to sign up there. You can do live stream or come in person if you're if you're close. Um and uh, I, it'll, it'll really be a blessing. You're going to hear from the best speakers. Um, it was a God thing that we were able to compile this list of speakers so fast and so, in such a short amount of time. But we got the best of the best. And um, obviously, if you live stream, it's going to be available 30 days afterwards. And then we're working on having eventually a digital download for people to get this information later on. And, um, and again, we just felt we needed to do it, obviously, because of all the lies. We just cannot believe what we're seeing on the ground in the American universities, in our politicians, in, in just the rhetoric. And people, you know, I heard a reporter talk about this, um, and, and he says, this is what's different from 1938. He says in 1938 and, and even during the Holocaust, the Nazis tried to cover up their anti-Semitism. He says, these people now, they're not even covering up their anti-Semitism. 
They, they want to exterminate the Jews and they're not even h- afraid to hide it. And we're not even talking about the people of Hamas. We're talking about people in Western society, Islamic people or far left people just totally willing to say, kill the Jews by saying that the phrase to the river, to the sea, which means exterminate Israel. And they're not hiding it. I mean, Tom, I saw a, a, a video footage at UCLA of them, uh, these UCLA kids putting a pro Hamas, uh, the head garb on and hitting a pinata of Benjamin Netanyahu. And it's like, you guys are acting like a bunch of animals. What What is wrong with you people? And then when you ask these kids, what do you know about the Palestinians or Israel? They don't know anything. And But it's a, it's a hatred. It's a... It's a satanic, demonic uh, uh, spirit that's working through all of the Western world. It's really weird. Yeah. You know what? Their father is the devil. He's the father of lies. And when you look at it, the brainwashing began when these kids were in elementary school, which is another reason, folks, you got to fight for your kids. And you look at the last several years, brainwashing, 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 where people now will do whatever they are told. So they just go along with this hate the Jews, and uh, it's just appalling. But yet the Bible tells us the world's going to be gathered against Israel, against the Jew. Jerusalem will be a stumbling stone. Folks, the truth about Israel, we need to, listen, this is joining in, uh, joining together and recognizing I'm going to stand on the Lord's side in this. I believe the yeah. Bible is true. And so join us this weekend, uh, Saturday and Sunday. If you can, it's going to be great in person. If you yeah. can't, join us online. And uh, and uh, love to see you guys. And uh, thank you, Brandon. Any final words? No, I'm just, just we we need to realize this is historic. Um, this is this is not a, 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 a blip on the radar. This is historic. What's happening in the world from uh, from a history level, but also a prophetic level. It it, it is going to set up Israel eventually to realize they're going to be isolated. Um, America, look the pressure on Joe Biden right now is is heavy from the pro hamas leftists and he's he's trying to tell israel cease fire cease fire what israel's going to finally find themselves in is a situation where they're isolated and then think about this the only friend that will be on their side is this man with a plan the antichrist and he will come out of nowhere and be their best friend to be their protector and hence do the covenant so the whole thing is getting set up for that and um it's unfortunate but we have a front row seat to it so that's why we have to get as many jewish people saved before this uh and 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 get the truth out because even if we're raptured that truth will remain behind so a lot of our videos tom that all the things that you're doing and i'm doing and everyone else that those videos will be able to be seen once we're gone in the rapture and and so hopefully um, we get this truth out, and they will recognize what's going on. Amen. Uh, as you mentioned, this is historic, and um, it has never happened before. You know. Yeah. And uh, this is all leading exactly where you just said, Brandon. Thank you so much. Uh, we you live mentioned. in amazing times. We live in urgent times, and uh, let's let's join together and partner in the work of presenting the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ to as many people are out there that are willing to listen to it. Let's press forward together. God bless you guys. Hope you can join us online or in person this weekend at Pastor Brandon's church. And thank you, Brandon, for joining us. God bless you You guys. God bless you.